welcome to this episode of T-Tech. On today's episode, we're going to be setting up NTOPNG on Ubuntu Linux server. So, we're going to first log in here. And let's check what our IP address is. 166 in my case, NZ. So, keep that in mind. We're going to do sudo apt-get update. sudo apt-get install and top ng. Hit yes there to accept that. And once this installs, <coughs> most times it will automatically enable itself and start. Let's see if we do ss-ltun for the switches. For listen, TCP, UDP, and uh, don't resolve names. So it automatically started, and um, it's on 0.0.0.0. That means all interfaces with an IP address, um, they can be used to reach NTOPNG at this point. So it's server process that's listening on TCP port 3000. Um, any interface on the server or on a firewall, it doesn't really matter where NTOPNG is running. You can access it on any of those. So it's on TCP port 3000. And to test it, we're going to go to our web browser. And we're going to go to this IP, 166, colon 3000. And there is our login. I did change the default in, uh, in testing. You will have to change the default address though. So there you go. And we're logged in. And this is the interface. It tells you some basic info. And uh, there's a wealth, uh, wealth of information this is showing us. Amount of flows and things like that. But instead of uh, just having this listen in the open, because this is just HTTP, it's not encrypted. There's two ways we can do this. We can set up a public-private key pair and enable HTTPS on NTOPNG, or we can use SSH and tunnel into NTOPNG's interface. Now, in this case, I'm gonna use SSH to tunnel into the interface, and um, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So, on Linux, we're going to go to Etsy and .ng.conf. And under this switch dash W in the config file, we are going to add the loopback IP address and a colon for port 3000. In this case as well, if you want the interface to listen on more than just on like a specific interface. I can also tell it, let's just listen on the one IP address. So if this is a router and you only have, you want to listen on the LAN interface and not the WAN as well, you can limit it in that way. But in this way, I'm gonna limit it to um, only the loopback, like so. As well, while we're in here, we can also edit, <coughs> add rather, interface uh, like EMP0S3. If we want it to listen on that interface, if this was a router or a hypervisor running VMs, you can use TON0 if you want that. Or maybe a VPN interface you want to monitor. So, like, EMP0S3 could be the LAN, EMP0S2 could be the WAN. It, this isn't what the interface will listen on for connections. This is the interfaces Entopogy will collect packets from for analysis, for deep packet inspection and everything. Now, we don't actually need to add those at all because it automatically detects it. All we got to make sure that's in there is we change this to loopback. And we're going to also change the port while we're at it to 8080. <clears throat> now we're going to restart 
and top in G real quick. All right, now that it's restarted, let's do sudo ss-lton. And it's on 127.001, colon 8080 there. It's not listening on any um, interface that actually has a routable IP address. It's just uh, on loopback. So right now, if I try to go to 166, even if I went to... Uh, 8080 or 3000 or whatever, it's not actually going to work because that's not where the uh, NTOPNG server is listening anymore. So we need to open up our SSH client here, and we are going to do SSH dash capital L. I'm going to do 8081 colon 127 001 colon 8080. So that means the first port is the port I am binding to on my local network stack. After the first colon, this means the socket I'm binding to either, in this case, on the SSH server itself, on their loopback interface, and port 80 is where I want the traffic forwarded to. I could also say if I had an Apache web server sitting behind my SSH server for some reason, I could say I want to go out to like 192.168.0.240 on colon 80 instead. That way it would hit the SSH server, then the SSH server would then tunnel it over and send it to the um, web server on port 80. Then it would be acting like a proxy. That's what we're doing here. We're just using the local network stack to do it of the server itself. So after all that though, just do your normal login info, like this, and let's log in. That's all we have to do. And um, we're going to go back to our browser, and on there, we're going to put 127.001, colon, 80.81. This is our local network stack, but because we told SSH to listen on our network stack on 80.81, and to forward traffic over to loopback on the SSH server, on that server's 8080, it's going to end up getting to top in G. So we hit enter, and we're at top in G. So now we log in. And now we're on to top in G through the loopback interface. So even though this is plain text, it's not going to be seen. It's encrypted via SSH before it hits in top and G. And because in top and G is not listening on a public facing interface of any kind, you're not going to be able to access it without SSHing in first. Because now the only port we're actually exposing on the server is 22. So that's how we do this and how we have it set up. And uh, as always, it's been Tyler with T Tech, and I do hope you found this video helpful and informative. I'd like to thank you for watching and have a very nice day.